let's start with the term embryology and explain to the ones watching us what does an embryologist do exactly and maybe how um, an embryologist works with the other members of the team for human uh, assisted reprodu reproduction yeah um, originally initially uh, an embryologist was somebody who studied embryos in, inside um, the womb um, uh, but a clinical embryologist only really deals with um, sperm eggs and embryos uh, up to the to the point where they are then put back into a woman so it's it's actually not the most exact term um, a reproductive right. biologist what might be a, a better term but um, uh, if you see the word clinical embryologist it indicates that a person is a biologist and is involved with the IVF process okay and does a couple directly address is a clinical embryologist or how no, does the process okay the, pro happen? the process at the beginning of patients um, who are having problems conceiving would approach a, a doctor and right. who would then refer them to a specialist now that would be a gynecologist who specialized in um, infertility treatment um, they would have to uh, assess whether that, that patient um, is suitable for whatever form of assisted conception um, they will then see if they can stimulate them to produce many eggs. Now the the um, patient then is, is given drugs to make them produce more than one egg and um, they are scanned to see if the you can't see the eggs themselves but the structure that they sit in on the ovaries called follicles you can measure them and see them grow. When they get to a certain star, size they can be harvested and it's, that's at that point the embryologist is involved in that the, they will be present during the collecting of the eggs, they will identify them microscopically, um, they will look after them, uh, nurture them, keep them in uh, nutrient fluids in the right um, environment. They will also um, re receive a sample from the men, um, um, so the, the, their main job is to make sure the environment of the sperm and the eggs and then the resulting embryos are uh, at an optimum they will mix the eggs and sperm together or they may inject the sperm individually into eggs as is slightly different procedures mm -hmm. of IVF they will then make sure say the following day that they are fertilized and then they will keep them in the laboratory under um, carefully guarded conditions to, to um, facilitate growth and the embryos, resulting embryos, are either placed into the, into the womb, so this is back to the doctor now, doctor right. and embryologists and nurses all together putting the embryos back into the womb, either um, two days to five days after the eggs are collected. The, there's often more embryos than you wish to put back, um, so those can be frozen for a later, tri for later treatment. Okay, for how long? <laughs> well, that's a difficult question to answer. Biologically, it could be hundreds of years. And normally, it's um, like in the UK, it's a legal limit that right. tells us how long we can keep them for. But not Which is? Um, oh, in the UK, it's, it's a little complicated. Um, you can extend it up. Um, you can keep them for 10 years. You can extend that up to 55 years. Um, in, in 10 years at a time, then. Right, I don't know how it is in Romania, but no, there may there may not be um, rules. Oh, rules, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but for for somebody's reproductive future, there's there's not a problem. They can be kept for someone. People have heard of uh, IVF. What other procedures, maybe still experimental, are there or in this? As an alternative, let's say. Well, the, the, is, is in terms of future of this area, well, uh, the um, I wouldn't say that anything is experimental because anything that, that is brought into the clinical world into into right. treatment has to be approved. So it, it's not experimental. IVF. There are variations on IVF. Um, I briefly mentioned one of them where I said we inject sperm mm -hmm. into eggs. This is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection or 
ICSI yeah. and you may have seen that. Now there are occasions when the ma a man is producing very few sperm or very few moving sperm and if we were trying to put the sperm and the eggs together they, they may not have enough force to penetrate an egg. So we pick up individual sperm and inject them into the center of the, of the egg. That's cause the ICSI and that's an extension if you like of the IVF procedure. It is a type of IVF. What might be able to be done so that this procedure can yield better results, maybe, or well, higher, higher percentage of yeah, the, success the rate? Yeah, the improvements on, on either of those two techniques um, would be um, better equipment, equipment made purposely for for IVF rather than saying oh I'll use this incubator because this is an mm -hmm. incubator mm, whereas I've got one here that's um, been tailor-made for IVF and that's happening more and more equipment and the nutrients that we keep them in the media um, is also improving because that's being made purposely with IV for IVF in mind with very good quality control. Um, some of the medical sides improving in that the better drugs are being made to stimulate um, the right. ladies to produce eggs. So all that's happening all, all the time and it's not one giant breakthrough but several mm. little ones occurring slowly. Um, do you want me to talk about other variations? Sure, yeah, yeah. because... Okay. Um, other variations uh, of IVF um, may involve uh, the use of, uh, of donor eggs or donor sperm. Um, obviously, um, if we were, if a lady required donor eggs, the lady who's given the eggs would have to undergo the um, first part of the IVF procedure, where she's stimulated to make yeah. eggs and an actual operation to remove the eggs. And whereas um, sperm donation is a lot simpler and there is no m major um, involvement in, in that there's no drugs or stimulation. Um, therefore somebody can receive eggs from uh, uh, a known or anonymous donor um, if, if somebody has say reached uh, premature menopause. Um. So, do you feel that um, it's an area of science that is moving quickly or slowly? Um, well, Are you working in well, the research right now? Or? No, 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 no. It, I'm purely service. Okay. Um, there is research, of course there is research. Now, there are improvements, um, but as I said earlier, the improvements are at the moment slowly. In saying that, um, the, the first test tube baby was um, the first successful delivery of a test tube baby or IVF uh, baby was in 1978 um, uh, in the UK. So it's not a very old field. So it has actually come a long way in yeah. 34 years. Um, so yes, there are there are been some major changes. Um, um, but I think we've reached a stage where changes are not so dramatic. Mm -hmm. The introduction of the ICSI procedure, uh, which was in the early 90s, was, was one of the major changes in I IVF because it meant that people previously who couldn't be treated were now treatable because we could only need a handful of sperm, which made a, a huge difference. And we routinely now, the men who are producing very few sperm, and we can't find any in the ejaculate, we will take a piece of testis, find the sperm in that, and inject them into the eggs. Does an embryologist help in any way related to genetics or genetic diseases? Or? Uh, there, there would be um, <clears throat> some embryologists who are involved with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis where a, um, say a, a cell from an embryo is picked up and that's then taken to a genetic laboratory for, for examination. Mm -hmm. um, for an example say cystic fibrosis they might be looking to see if that embryo has got the cystic fibrosis gene and the only way to tell is to take one or two of the cells away from it. So it's that, that sort of thing the embryologists are involved with because they're actually biopsying or taking a piece of the embryo away. 
Yeah. Um, I should say at this point that um, if you take a, a cell away from an embryo, it doesn't mean there will be a part of it missing when it grows further. Um, because the cells of an embryo at these early stages, we're talking about only eight cells. Mm -hmm. um, if you take two, say two cells from the eight cell, the six that the, may well survive, and, and it should compensate for the lack of loss of some cells. Each of those cells is capable of becoming anything in the body. They have the p total potential to be anything. They are the ultimate stem cell. Okay. So it won't it won't be ending with an arm missing or anything like that, <laughs> <laughs> because there's, they haven't decided what they're going to be become. They're not. It's not whether going to be a skin or a bone or a muscle cell yet. Okay. Uh, so, a more personal question. Why did you become an embryologist? No, <laughs> how did you I didn't aim to become an embryologist because I, 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 work, I, I actually started working in the field in 1978 as well. And of course there were no embryology labs, so I didn't mm. end, start off. I um, I'd done my A-levels, I wanted to work in a hospital laboratory. The choices were hematology, bacteriology, uh, biochemistry, and there was an advert for somebody uh, working in a seminology lab. Seminology is dealing with uh, semen analysis, mm -hmm. sperm banking, um, and all sorts of associated tests. Um, and as a, as a young man, I, 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 I got a job um, working in this um, seminology lab, uh, so it was not by design, but by opportunity. But you stuck with it, so <laughs> yeah, it's still... <laughs> well, that was, yeah. So I, I stayed just working with, um, uh, yeah, with, with semen for some time and then got involved with, with IVF, with the natural progression. During that time, um, of course, you know, when I started work, there were, no, as I said, there were no IVF labs because there weren't people just um, doing it in in, in um, the, the original people in in Oldham General Hospital and at Cambridge University. That there were no purposely made clinics then. During the next few years, they there were uh, clinics spreading throughout the world, and that snowballed ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think of Romania's development in this area? Well, there's, so there's, 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 there's no reason why um, uh, people here cannot achieve a very high level. Um, it, n most of the problems come do down to money, you know, to, to buy specialist equipment, to, to um, get specialist help. In, in that people with, with experience and or either on the nurse in front, doctor's front or, or the biologist's front. Mm -hmm. um, the specialist equipment that's needed, the nutrients, the stimulation drugs are all relatively expensive because it's a sl it is a narrow field. It's a, not like other areas of medicine which um, are very big and therefore the drugs are, are cheaper. So I think the main important is, is having some guidance to what should be done and having somebody who's prepared to um, initially um, sorry um, to put the capital to, to, to start these things but there's no reason why the people are capable the doctors are capable it's a matter of, of learning right. you, the facilities are not beyond Ma making. Are you teaching people right now? In Romania, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, my role was to try to um, to start to bring the laboratory into the standards set by the um, a European directive. So, okay. so we've looked at improving um, equipment. And we've bought some incubators and um, which have made a huge difference to our success. Um, I am teaching junior embryologists um, so that, that you know it, they can then take over this, this mm -hmm. work and be you know independent from, from people outside the, the country. You've got to be self-sufficient, yeah.